What's up everybody, Nonix here. This is a new part of a uh, tutorial section I want to do for you guys. Basically what I'm going to do is explain every single function in Massive that at least I know and I'm going to explain it in easy to use terms because I don't know the complicated terms and I actually don't know what's going on with half the buttons on the damn thing. But I will show you what the buttons mean to me and how I create my sounds. Uh, if you've been following me for a while you'll notice I have over a hundred free presets for Massive on my Facebook page and also I probably have like 80 or 90 videos on my YouTube channel explaining how to make various sounds from pretty much everything that's in modern dance music today. Uh, but with this pre with this uh, tutorial I'm going to start with the Learn Massive Like a Pro series. This is going to be the very first tutorial and also the most basic. So if you already know a bit about Massive you might not want to watch this video as I'm going to go over step by step very 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 rudimentary uh, and early level type things but again I'm going to explain them in uh, layman's terms per se. Okay so let's start off. Uh, the best bet with you, honestly, if you could follow along on your Massive, kind of like you're in school, that might be the best way to learn this. Alright, cool. So go to File, New Sound. You should look just like this. So I'm going to start off with the OS1, OS2, and OS3 sections. Now what these are is Oscillator 1, Oscillator 2, Oscillator 3. You should just have one on right now, and it should sound just like this. Yes, I'm going to play levels over and over again just because it's funny and also probably annoying, but that's okay. So, let's get started. Basically, turn it on and off just like that. Okay, if you click this little menu down, you have all these various, um, I like to call them sounds, I think the proper term is wavetables, I may be wrong. But basically, all of these in here produce a different tone. Okay, so let's give you some examples of that. You know, you have your basic saw sound. Uh, you, you scroll over here smooth square you have your basic square sound um, we'll go down here you have a triangle etc etc I think you get the gist now before I get too far into this let me show you something just say you have you want to go to uh, square saw 2 so you have the square sound playing but if you see this knob that says WT position what it actually stands for I have no idea but what happens is if you turn it to the left it'll go towards the square sound. Now if you notice up here it says saw, this means saw 2 and this means square 2. So more squarey as you can hear it's more squarey slowly getting more sawy and now it sounds more like a saw. So any of those knobs especially the ones that have you know the, these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 by turning it over you get the other sound. Now this might be a good time to explain the intensity Let's go back to square saw one and let that play through. Now here it has some kind of background rasps to it, or some background ambient no ambient noise, I guess. Cleaner. Intensity basically makes the sound cleaner, in my opinion. Again, this is just my opinion on what the sound is doing, what it's actually doing, I have no idea. But if you need a dirtier sound, or a cleaner sound. That's a really clean clean square compared to that. So this is a great, very good, uh, great function to use if you need to adjust the tone of your sound, and I use it on almost all my presets. Okay, so those are the very, very basic functions of the oscillator, uh, oscillator one. Now I'm gonna go over some other sounds real quick for you, just some ones that I am a favorite to use and what I hear in other sounds. Now. Um, poly saws are typically used in dead mouth style plucks. I very rarely ever use them, but they sound they usually sound good in those style of plucks. Not so good in lots of other stuff. Uh, usually when the uh, levels and envelope are down, but I'll talk about that at a different video. Okay, so you have all these you can go through. I don't need to go through every single one. Another popular one is these which you actually I'll expl explain this in a second but okay let's drop this down now you can just hear me playing with the sounds these are used in a lot of dubstep sounds the 
rough mass. I have it on the format setting, which I'll explain a little bit later, but I do notice that a lot of producers do use uh, massive for dubstep, and they do use those math sounds, the rough math sounds. Okay, now let's scroll through these. You can all check all these out on your own. There's no point for me to really go through and explain every single one of them, but these are the basic ones. You go to the more, uh, I guess, like exotic ones over here. Um, acid, this will give you an acid -y sound, as you can hear. And again, like I said before, just adjust the intensity and adjust the WT position to get the different sounds you want. You can actually get a lot of different sounds by simply one oscillator and adjusting these frequent these uh in here. Okay, now let's go and see what else. Another very popular one. Uh, these I don't use too often, but definitely try them out. I'm sure they're cool sounds. Uh, the screamer, you hear that a lot. Now you can see just I mean how different it is that compared to that. So just by playing with these WT tables or the wave tables, you can get vastly different sounds, which is obviously very helpful. Let's see what else. Now we have the famous, I call it the famous sound, you have the modern talking sound, which you've heard in every song 400 times. Simple just like that. Now again, listen to that. Totally sounds different talking. Okay, and adjusting this again. Very basic. Now, I'll show you this in a later video, but a very easy way to get a talking sound is to get a modern talking, route an LFO to it, adjust that intensity around, route another LFO to it. I get a little off tangent, but just to show you. Yeah. So, I mean, that, granted, this wasn't pre planned, but that just shows you how easy it is to create your own sounds. And that's just one oscillator. So, let me turn those off. I'll, get, I'll go over those more in a later video. Turn it off for now. Okay. So, anyways, back up here. Uh, you have Deep Throat. <laughs> What a funny name, Deep Thread. <laughs> uh, these are really, this is kind of a cool patch, a cool sound to use uh, to get some of the Zed style stuff. You might actually use this. And again, route that LFO to it, you get some really cool sounds. Um, exp uh, experiment around with all of these. Uh, scrapyard way down here. There's another popular uh, sound that I hear pretty often. Then everything else is pretty much self-explanatory. These FX chords, try those out when you're making FX. I never ever use them for anything. They sound... Yeah, I'm sure they're good for something. I haven't figured it out what yet, though. But uh, feel free to experiment with those. Okay, now let's go over the these right here. Now, to be honest with you, I can't tell you exactly what the hell they do. I have no fucking idea. But I do know that they change the sound dramatic, uh, dramatically. So let's go back to the basic patch. Right there. Let that play through and watch. Put it on bin. Right, it's a subtle change, but it's there. Very minute. And sometimes just that little change will be all you need to make something sound different. Now let's try bin minus plus. Not much change again, but it's different. So, you know, always play around with those settings. Uh, I'm not actually sure 100% what it's doing with inside mass. I'm sure somebody else that's more of a nerd than I am can explain it to you. But uh, I just know it changes the sound. As does that. Now, the bottom one, format, will vastly change the sound. As you can tell. And adjusting the intensity on format really changes the sound. Normal. Now a little tip, a lot of times the Skrillex style and dubstep style uh, harsh sounds 
will be off of a format filter with LFOs routed and obviously a lot more stuff, but Let's see. There you go. I'm sure someone just had oh shit, that's how they make that sound. But yeah. Let's see. So basically, definitely the format filters are really popular in dubstep as they'll give you a uh, gritty sound. They also change up a lot. I mean, if you actually just go back and watch this. If you just do a watch the spectrum, see? Rubbish. Format, dubstep. Rubbish, dubstep. Obviously, I'm totally oversimplifying things, but you get the gist. So always be... Uh, you know, always remember the format filter is there to use, and uh, it's definitely good for a bunch of stuff. Okay, let's go back up here. Let's see. That pretty much explains one oscillator now. Obviously, you have multiple oscillators you can stack up. Put it back on here. Now, I don't know exactly how these interact with each other, but listen to the difference. So I have the amp all the way down, so it's off, but... Now, and again, very minute difference if you hear just the one oscillator and the second oscillator. But by adjusting these intensities and by adjusting these amps, will give you vastly different sounds. And you know, a, a Z bass line will be the difference between you know, adjusting to rubbish. But then by adjusting certain, and I'm not saying I'm getting the exact bass line here or anything near it, but I'm just saying, as you can tell, adjust, adjusting the intensities and adjusting the amps will obviously give you quite a different sound than every, if everything's just maxed out. So it's not always great just to max out everything and be like, oh, more is better, you know. Sometimes that sounds, to me, that sounds better than that. So, you know experiment around with stuff and uh, don't forget to always be adjusting these to find the ideal sound. Now let's go down to this last one here. Again, just adding up stuff. So let's go put that down negative 24 also. And don't forget you can always adjust these. This is just basically just to show you how you can easily create your own sounds by adjusting just these parameters. We haven't even talked about routing, we haven't talked about filtering, any of that stuff yet. And then going to format. So just say you have something like that. You want to go, we'll explain this later, but route some. And this might sound like shit, I have no idea, we'll find out. Kind of rubbish, pretty rubbish, but you get just what I'm saying. Basically, it's a lot of trial and error, and that's how I get most of my uh, patches. I just I have the original sound in my head, and I just keep going for it until I get to it. So I mean, that basically explains this section. I said again, not in the best exact detail, but. These are very important. When I first started using Massive, I would just like crank everything to the right and be like, more is better, and it's definitely not the case. Um, also, I like to talk about in this section here, the ability to detune stuff. So just say you go up to, you have three playing right now, everything's full. And by the way, I haven't touched any of this. It's still on Polyphon 1, just so it's the new sound. So nothing's been changed in there. But just say everything cranking here, and you want to do a little bit of detuning. If you don't know what detuning is, this is detuning. A good example of a detune lead would be the lead in um, LFAO Party Rock is in the house. Detuning. Now, I don't know the exact science behind detuning, but it will give the uh, sense different movement and give them more flow and... Uh, and it's definitely something that you want to use from time to time if you're going for a certain sound. As you can tell, just basic, and then, you know, a little bit of... You can actually get those old school techno rave type leads by doing a good amount of... Excuse
excuse me, by doing a good amount of uh, detuning. So that's definitely something you want to uh, be aware of. Okay. Now I think that about sums up this section. Also, the uh, these sliders right here. I should go into that now. Uh, it just I'll explain it more later, but F1 means it routes the filter 1, F2 means it routes the filter 2. So sometimes you want to route it up to the top or route it to the bottom, which this filter is not being run right now, so that's why there's no sound coming out. But I'll explain those in a later video when I go over the uh, filters. So again, hopefully uh, that helps someone. This is my first video of this, so I'm trying to explain things the best I can. and. Uh, Check back for the other videos if you're interested. I will explain more and more and more and more things eventually leading up to how you can pretty much create whatever the hell sound you want and how it's really just a bunch of trial and error. But uh, knowing some basic things will definitely come in handy. So I will uh, upload this and hopefully it helps you guys. Cheers. Talk to you soon. Bye.